thankfully this is not a dog training channel so <laughs> you're not going to just see a lot of me just like feeding my dog um, but <laughs> today you are and this is why um, training Nelly has actually really taught me a lot about stress and about not only how she deals with stress obviously but also how um, I personally process stress. Um, when she sees dogs in particular, she stiffens up and gets pretty stressed. Um, and, um, thankfully our neighbor recommended a just really awesome class that we were able to enroll her in, um, that helped us learn how to help her in those situations. And honestly, it's helped to me too, like to think about stress, um, because it's one thing to learn about stress in a textbook or even like talk about it with my therapist in like you know, kind of clinical terms. And then it's another to actually see it in my little doggy and, um, be able to kind of help her through that and walk her through those steps over and over and over again. And I mean, we are not dogs. We are a little more complex in our thinking, at least as far as we can tell. Um, but there's a lot that I've learned from just observing her stress response and how we have to help her work through that, that has been really helpful for me. So that's what we're going to talk about in today's video. And we have a cute little guest to help us. So the first thing with Nellie is that her stress starts with a trigger. Um, it might be another dog barking. It might be her seeing a dog. It may just be a noise that she doesn't recognize like a siren or something. And so every single time there's something, then there's the response. With Nelly, I can usually see the response in how she holds her ears or how she stiffens up in her body, or I might even hear it because she's barking. And there's a lot of other things as well, but like you can see the physical response in her. It's just making her tense up or do something else that indicates that she is stressed. And then at that point, there's two ways that this situation can go. There can either be a buildup of stress and you have just a very tense dog that can't calm down and just keeps getting more and more and more and more and more stressed, or you have a release of stress and then she's able to be her little calm, mellow self that you can hopefully see right now. I don't know, but she is, she's cuddling me and this is her favorite. And the really interesting thing about that is that that's what happens to me as a human too. Like at some point there's a trigger, something stresses me out. We have a bodily, you know, physical and emotional response to it. And then we either ignore it and it gains momentum. It just builds on itself when we find ourselves getting more and more stressed out or we find a way to release it. And then we are able to like actually not have that stress in our lives, we're able to effectively deal with it. But I think that's really important to realize that like what happens when you ignore the stress, just like my little girl is just a little bit stressed right now. Um, she doesn't really like how I'm holding her. Yes. And, um, if I continue to ignore it, the stress is probably going to build up until she is just really antsy and doesn't want to do anything for me because she hasn't been able to release that stress that she's been feeling. And I think that for a lot of us, there's this temptation to act like stress doesn't affect us. We want to be chill or we want to be tough or just whatever. And so in the moment when something stresses us out, instead of saying like, oh, you know what? That is stressful and acknowledging it and working through it and then allowing ourselves to release it we instead kind of just shove it down and that stress stays there. And then we are building on top of a foundation of being just a little bit stressed. And then we do it again. And it's just, we're just a little bit more stressed to start out. We get closer and closer to this buildup where we just can't calm ourselves down very easily. Um, and when I say we, I, I am talking about myself. I do this all the time. It's something that I am definitely trying to work on getting better at being honest with myself and like acknowledging how I am actually feeling about things that stress me out so that I don't get to the point where little things are just, you know, sending me over the edge of overwhelm and stress, but I'm not there yet. So if we ignore it and push it down, that's bad news. But also I feel like if we go ahead and give the stress all of our attention, that can also 
not work out very well in our favor. So for example, with Nellie, if she hears a dog barking or sees another dog on the street, she is like locked into that thing that is stressing her out. Unless I can um, make her acknowledge what is happening and kind of get her to move or be distracted from it for a minute, she just watches that thing and locks in on it and lets her stress grow and grow and grow and grow and grow and grow and grow until there's not really anything she can do about it or I can do about it. So part of our training is like recognizing before she gets to that point so that we can kind of intervene and help her not get like so stressed out because we want to be able to help her recognize it and also help her diffuse it so that she's not walking around like a little stress ball. On the human side, this is actually why building in a self-care routine, and I talked about that in one of my videos, so I will go ahead and link to that here, um, but why building a self-care routine into your day, or at least like doing a little bit of self-care every single day is so helpful because you don't ever want to get to that point where you're so stressed out that you can't diffuse the stress. It's really better if you don't have to rely on recognizing that you are stressed because I think for a lot of us, um, we either are like hyper fixated on the thing that is stressing us out. And so we don't really recognize that we need to stop doing that. Or we're not as in tune with ourselves as, you know, we'd like, we'd like to be, or we'd like to think. And so recognizing when we actually do need to diffuse our stress or having time to do it when we need to can be a little bit dicey. So I feel like building self-care in just little bits every day is a really good way to make sure that you're getting that preventative self-care and so that you're doing it and you're diffusing any stress that might have built up even if you haven't taken the time to recognize it yet. I actually listened to a podcast episode one time where the psychologist talked about how we can be addicted to drama as humans. So it's this sort of weird cycle where like, the thing that is stressing us out is also like the thing that we're addicted to. And so we keep creating or putting ourselves into situations where like stressful things are happening because that feeling is actually, we're so used to it that it makes us feel safe. And so going on with the Nelly analogy, like I don't think she's actually addicted to the drama of looking at another dog or hearing other dogs barking, right? but she has been conditioned through whatever events in her life. I don't know because I've only had her as part of my family for a little bit, but she's been conditioned to think that if she knows what other dogs are doing and she lets them know that she's tough or where she is or whatever is going on through her little doggy mind when she decides she needs to bark at another dog. Like I can't speak to her, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that that's why she's so fixated on what the other dogs are doing is because she wants to know if she's going to be unsafe. And I think that's relatable too. So often we stay closely connected to the very things that stress us out, you know, social media, inboxes, um, whatever, because they give us a sense of safety or control. At my last job, um, I primarily communicated with my customers and my coworkers through email. And I knew that like checking my email inbox constantly, or at least like multiple times an hour, didn't actually make me like a more productive employee or a better employee. And I also knew that it stressed me out, but there was like this daily struggle for me about how often I would check my email because um, you know, you do have to check it some. And the more often I would check it, the more I felt like I was in the know. And that gave me this like false sense of control, right? The reality was that whether I checked my email a couple of times a day or a couple of times every 15 minutes, um, I had about the same amount of knowledge, right? Like that stuff was all going to be there when I checked it. But in my mind, checking it more often gave me this sense of control. And so it was really addictive, even though I also knew that it was causing me a lot of stress to be constantly interrupting my day and checking my email that way. So we don't want to ignore the stressor. We don't want to keep stressing ourselves out. So how do we deal with stress so that we are able to like actually release it the way that we try to do with Nelly. Um, and that right there is a really good question. 
and it's a really hard one to answer effectively in our lives. The first step, obviously, I think we've kind of talked about this already, is acknowledging that it's happening, knowing or becoming aware of the kinds of things that stress you out and being aware of how stress feels to you um, because there are emotional symptoms. There are also physical symptoms when you are stressed. It is both a biological and emotional response. And so like knowing how that feels so you're able to recognize it, that's the first step. But it's not the only step, right? Because if you just stay there and you focus on it, you're just going to get more stressed. So the second thing is you need to be able to process through it. Um, if you have not done this with a licensed professional, like a therapist, a counselor or whatever, I, I highly, highly recommend doing this. Um, I read a lot of like self-help stuff and, um, I'm really interested in what's going on in my brain. But honestly, until I started working with a professional one-on-one, -on -one, I was not making the kind of progress in this area, specifically like stress and anxiety that I have been since it is, it is really helpful. So if you have never done that, definitely try it. And if you have done it, use the process that you went through with your therapist. It's hard and I don't like doing it a lot of days, but you go ahead, you process through, you figure out why those things are making you respond the way that they are making you respond and you give yourself permission to feel the things that you're feeling. And then the third step is you need to do something to release that stress. And this releasing part is the part that I usually forget about, but working with Nelly has really shown me how important it is. With Nelly, we diffuse her stress by playing little games together. Um, I will like make her focus on me instead of whatever is stressing her out. And I will, you know, toss her treats and she has to go find them or whatever. Unfortunately for most of us, we don't have like a couple of caring humans, like following us around all day and trying to pay attention to what we need. So we kind of have to take care of it ourselves. So when you know that you have experienced some stress, you have to be able to do things that just kind of help you release it over the course of living. And this is where self-care comes in, but this is also something that you probably are going to have to do on a um, as needed basis. So for example, you might exercise, like really any kind of exercise, moving your body is gonna be helpful for this. Hello. You know, walking, running, jumping jacks, um, yoga, all of those things just to kind of help you get the energy out of your body that the stress has created. Moving physically can be a really good way to get rid of the energy that is kind of built up when you are stressed. Other things that I think are really helpful when I'm stressed are doing something that absorbs my full attention. When I'm stressed, letting my mind wander, even though that's great for like creativity and a lot of other things is really not the best thing for me because then I kind of end up in this stress spiral. You know, it just, I stress and I get anxious and I get more stressed about being anxious and it uh, just gets worse and worse. Um, so just doing something that really takes me out of that for a minute and absorbs my attention is really helpful. Um, so like working on a hobby or um, maybe even like watching a movie or show that makes you laugh a lot, like laughing helps release that. Singing, praying, journaling, really what's going to work best for you is going to depend on, first of all, the kinds of things you like doing and um, how you are feeling based on the stress that you've experienced. And none of these things has to take super long um, unless the stress has been built up over a while and you haven't uh, been able to release it. You know, the point is once you've been able to process through your stress, uh, you need to find something that will help you release that energy that was generated as part of being stressed. I'm talking about energy very much in terms of like when you are stressed, your body starts to activate. It starts to go, okay, like what's going on? Um, it's overused, but like when you're stressed, your body doesn't know the difference between what's happening to you and what you would be feeling if you were being chased by a tiger. And so your body is getting ready for some sort of fight or uh, something. And so you need to be able to do something to show your body that like, hey, we are using the energy and we don't need that anymore. Um, so I don't usually give homework, but if I were to give homework for this episode, <laughs> um, it would be this. Make a list of three to five things that you think you would want to do to help yourself release stress throughout the day as it goes on. And it could be something 
as um, as simple as taking a five minute walk um, or you know going in your room, sh- shutting the door and dancing. Um, well, or it could be something as absorbing as, you know, giving yourself time to work on a hobby that you enjoy. Whatever those things are, make a list of like three to five things uh, because when you are stressed, I, f- I find that it's harder to think through like what you can do to help yourself. But if you have a list, um, you know, in your phone or on a sticky note somewhere where you can see it that you can just refer to, um, the chances are of you actually being able to do one of those things and get that stress released sooner rather than later is really good. So I hope this has been helpful. Um, my little, my little Nelly girl, I think is getting antsy. She doesn't want to be in the studio anymore. So we're going to say bye. 